dehydration is a bad thing, so when you're coming to the beach, make sure you have water, beverages, or something, because even if you don't think you're thirsty, being out here, you need more. <laughs> so anyway, this is the second part when it comes to car maintenance. Yes, to help you save fuel. So going back to that dealership, so make sure you check. You might want to ask a few people because not only do you want to check on your dealership in general, because one dealership um, may be better than the other. A lot of times it has to do with which one is more geographically convenient to where you're working, or to where you're being, or who's got a car rental. But sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes they have these, these dealerships like Lexus and Mercedes. Oh man, you should see them in Orange County. I mean. They might as well be a spa for cars. But doesn't it also basically depend upon location? Well, yeah. Like I would say, much of it has to do with location. But all service advisors, like I said, are not created alike. Because the service advisor I had, I really liked. I always felt that he took good care of me. But then later on, I found out that his dollar per car rates were ended up being higher than the other person. Also, when you're getting your car service, do not be afraid to ask them what needs to be taken care of right then, because they'll give you an idea of this needs to be taken care of immediately. This can probably 5,000 miles, 10,000 miles, and this, you know, and some things are critical if they go out because either A, they'll cost you an awful lot of money just to repair that piece, or two, they will cause something else to go out that will cost you an awful lot of money. Okay. Well, uh, cars are designed that one thing will kick something else out on it. That's They're designed specifically to do that. Well, I think that's why a lot of people are afraid to go to car dealerships. Okay. They're, <laughs> basically, you generally hear nothing but bad news from a car dealership. But the trick is simple. If you think that it's something they're telling you isn't the truth, all you got to do is go to somebody else that's independent and have them verify it. That's right. In fact, you can go from dealership to dealership or an independent guy versus the dealership. I mean, like I it, mean, it, it's your choice. It, you okay. don't have, you know, this is like a medical thing. Get a second opinion if you don't agree with it. That's right. It's okay. Because, uh, you know, and then I'll make, if, they, if they're going to repair something, have them put it in writing. Oh, yeah. I think that's one of the they have to give you an estimate written yep. before you do it. Now, if they change it from what is written and what you signed for, you can actually, actually, you can refuse to pay for it. I think they that's don't. the way it is. Yeah. If they change it, they have to, before they do, before the dealership or wherever you go does anything like that, they have to tell you that if something they found something else. I mean, okay, the they honest. They have to give you an estimate beforehand. I, I, I'll give you an example. I I had a, a water pump problem on my car. Right. They you know asked me, well, we've got the water pump. Do you want us to put new belts and hoses in at the same time? Which was actually smart. But then they found something else wrong as they were taking things apart, and then came to me. I mean, they called me on the phone and asked me, you know, that we've got a you know problem here and it's going to kick out on you. Mm -hmm. Do you want us to fix it while everything is open? Well, sometimes. You know. But see, I work on cars, so I knew that what they were saying was probably right. But see, part of it is if you don't know what they're saying... Ask somebody else. You can ask somebody else. The other part is if you are female, you may also want to bring a male in with you unless you, unless you really know all this stuff. Yeah. Now, I know that sounds kind of sexist, but sometimes it can make a difference. Or immediately when, they, when you are told something you don't understand, which a lot of males don't understand also, Simply get on the telephone and call somebody you know that does understand, and he can try to explain the situation. Or you can also do an internet search and ask. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, usually if you have a resource and you can call someone quickly, it's the easiest thing to do. Yeah. But know? basically, if your car is under warranty, they'll they'll work their butt off to try to find nothing wrong with it. Well, and if if your car is under warranty, make sure the dealership takes care of all of that stuff. In fact, if you're getting close to one of the warranty, you know, what is it, markers? Yeah. 50,000 or 60,000 miles or 100,000. If there's things that are covered right now under that warranty that will not be, make sure you take your car in prior to that mile yeah. marker and right. have that item checked. Mm. 
you know, with the, you know, servicing your car at the moment, it, it, we did say that, it's one of the most important things that you can do because the car is, it, they say it's the second most expensive, no, having children is, uh, you know, <laughs> it's having children, house, and then automobile. No, 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 let's call it ha having a spouse. Yeah. Having a house. Yeah, it, it, but it, it's you know, it, it, you know, but you don't necessarily have to have a spouse. To, uh, the children ask, to, ask you know, a lot of people in Hollywood, but no, it is like the third most expensive thing you're going to do in your life. You got to treat that, and then today, if your car really gets good gas mileage, you want to treat it like it's a, you know, like uh, the jewel in the crown. Mm -hmm. Treat it wild, because unless you're rich, you can't afford to replace that car. That's true. Now, here's another thing that you may not be aware of, is whether, if you're going to look for a service place to go ahead and get it taken care of, although this kind of applies for the dealership, well, not dealerships, not so much, but perhaps the gas station, or as well as an independent service gentleman, is to ask around, ask other people that you respect their decision on cars, ask other people that have cars similar to yours, ask them where they get their service, because a lot of times they can have some really good ideas. In fact. My previous car that I had was a Mercedes, which I absolutely loved. It was a sports coupe. But I needed a bigger car. But my car, I told my mechanic I had a love-hate relationship. I told him I loved him because he was able to maintain my car and maintain it so well that it didn't cost me that much. But I hated it because it was so reasonable to maintain a car that was already paid off that I couldn't justify buying a new car. <laughs> so... Yeah, but you had to get backed into by some paparazzi for that to happen. I know. That was... See, paparazzi, you, you think it's only Britney Spears? No. Apparently they thought it, was, it didn't help. No. It didn't help the car. That's why she has this, this Kia. Yep. So, here's the thing is, when the, my mechanic could maintain my car so well, I knew it was time to replace the car when he said that my car could back up. <laughs> My car could back up, given time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it was basically, I, you know, we know this, you know, for, we went to an event, and I had to get out of the car and push the car backwards so we could get out of the spot. So even though the car was running, the idea that I had to park the car so I could drive forward and not have to worry about backing up in case it was not working properly was not an acceptable <laughs> no. possibility for me any longer. So that's how I ended up with a Kia. Can you believe that? Going from a Mercedes Sports Coupe to a Kia Sorento, which I absolutely love. A lot of it's because of the turning radius, because it's high. And it's, it's compact. Stuff. And it, oh, yeah, it's in a compact space, which you would never believe. It, it, yeah, but it's, its maintenance is lower because it's a new car. Because it's a new car. Now, here's one of the things. If you're... Okay, now we're going to getting a new car because. <laughs> but anyway, just on a side note, if you're thinking of getting a new car, the, re the way I found mine was I had to rent a car because I was needed a bigger car. My car was not working that well, and I hadn't quite decided. So I happened to rent this car because it was the only one with a car cover. And after I rented it and used it for a week for SEMA, remember? automotive aftermarket um, oh and SEMA they've got a thing going on to the 25th of the month they help some children so you know you go to our website and you can see on the front page you know needy children are being helped by SEMA uh, so it's something something good so after I drove it well I compared everything to that car that I test drove whether it was a Mercedes or a BMW or a Honda or a Lexus or a Toyota can you tell I tested a lot of cars Anyway, everything kept being compared to this one, so I eventually got this one. But anyway, when it comes to maintaining your car, here's the thing is, take your time, don't be afraid to ask, do your research, and remember that maintaining your car is one of the most important things that you can do, well, for fuel economy, for your safety. Yes, okay, your safety is always more important than fuel economy. Yeah, and a lot of it's because of safety. When it comes to safety, remember, July 1st, the hands-free law. This one's by Jawbone. And Jawbone has a deal on right now. Ah, so check out their website, jawbone.com. But remember, it's the hands-free law, so do this so you can drive safely. So for now, on car maintenance, this is not a spring chick. We're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow. <laughs>